So under my last video, someone asked here, um, hey, by the way, any ideas how to build a vocal writer plugin with Bitwig envelope follower? What's the best way to record modulator to automation lane for further manual edits? And that's, I think, I guess the most important part that you can edit all the automation data later on. So here I have some vocals in Bitwig and that's actually the original Britney Spears vocals for Hit Me Baby One More Time. And um, that's the raw recording. So it's without all the sidechain processing applied. Oh, baby, baby, how was I supposed to know that something wasn't right here? Oh, baby, baby, I shouldn't have let you go. And now you're out of sight, yeah. Okay, so we want to follow the signal with an envelope follower and we want to record this data to the automation lane. And that's not possible within the same track. We have to use a second separate track for this. Um, for some reason, it's a bit weak, not possible to just record automation data from, you know, from modulators or from within the grid. Okay, so we use here an FX grid. Inside of this FX grid, it's really important that you choose your actually voices mono. And that's just so you use one voice. And then we use here one envelope follower. And you dial in the settings dependent on your situation. Sometimes you want to follow the signal more closely than other times, right? So it depends on your, uh, it depends on what you want to do with it. Um, then we switch this maybe to RMS and we send this out. Um, as CC data here. Uh, channel 1, let's go for, let's say, uh, CC 30. It, it doesn't matter. You can choose whatever controller number you want here. And then um, that's basically it. Then after the FX grid, we want to use a tool device. And again, a CC modulator or MIDI modulator here. And we want to use here also again the same controller number. 13 in this case, and then we modulate here the volume with this. So now it sounds like this. Oh, baby, baby, how was I supposed to know that something wasn't right here? Oh, baby, baby, I shouldn't have left. So now the peaks in the vocal track, right? Uh, push here this follower up. And then we get the modulation signal and this modulation signal then is used here to push the volume down. And you can apply a lot of different things here in front of the follower or after the follower. Maybe you want to multiply the signal or you want to delay it a bit or you want to smooth it out a bit or you want to get rid of some upper uh, frequencies or you want to, uh, you know, limit it in certain ways. So this is basically the benefit of doing this in Bitwig. You can make it your own. You can change it, right? It's not just a follower like any vocal writer. You can actually change the algorithm, how this reacts to your audio and how the signal is processed and how it's applied to the volume um, or gain reduction here. So you can make it your own. You can modify it. That's the that's a big benefit inside of Bitwig Studio because sometimes people ask why you do this from scratch or why you don't use an plug-in. With the plug-in, you have always like a set workflow that maybe works nice, but it doesn't learn anything how it works and you can you can't change it. It's always the same thing. Um, and sometimes it's fun just you know to do it on your own from scratch. Okay, so now that we have the signal here, um, like I said in the beginning, we can't actually record this data into the automation lane here you know, on the same track. It's not possible in Bitwig. I tried some hacks, um, but it's not really possible. It's, I guess, because Bitwig use internally um, a node format and not MIDI. I think they convert basically when you bring in MIDI from the controller, it's, it's converted into Bitwig's own node format. And then within Bitwig, you stay with this node format and it's it's not really CC data or it's not really in, uh, MIDI data. Um, so, so the only way to do this basically to use a separate track here, a second one, and you actually don't name this, but I use it here, or oh, let's say data. 
And we want to record basically now everything that comes out of this FX grid here into the second track. So we hit record here or arm this track and then we use here a vocals FX grid, right? The output of the FX grid, that's what we want to record. And you can see here, this is a MIDI or note data uh, channel. And all we have to do now is to hit record. Oh, baby, baby, how was I supposed to know that something wasn't right here? Oh, baby, baby, I shouldn't have let you go. And now you're out of sight, yeah. Show me how you want it to be. Tell me, baby, cause I need to know now. Hmm, so sweet. Um, yeah. So now that we have this CC data here, we can actually copy this. That's the tedious part. We can copy this and put this here into a new lane. So here we open up the automation lane on the first track and we add, no, we add here yes, a MIDI lane, right? You open this up here, MIDI lane, and then we can choose MIDI channel one and controller number is, yeah, 30. Okay, and this one is now empty and we can yeah, click on the first bar and or first uh, line and then control V, paste it in basically. And we have the same data here from copy pasted to the first track here on the same MIDI channel, on the same controller number. And then we can delete basically the second track. It's just to record and just to copy and then paste it in here. Um, so now that we have this here on the same controller and the so same channel, we can actually disable here the FX grid. And this one still reacts to CC30, which is basically this MIDI lane here. Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? But now you can go in, uh, make adjustments to parts of it, right? We can also, I think, uh, select everything here and then you can change the position so you can delay it later or earlier, right? So it's more like then when the follower takes a bit of time to react to the audio, so you can bring this more in front or put the modulation earlier, right? So it's more like a look ahead thing. And then we can also change the values. We can bring in chaos, a bit of random modulation. We can scale it. So it's more like multiplying the signal. Um, we can also offset everything. Um, and we can also go in and, you know, edit small little things in and out and then it reacts basically with the cc modulator to it and change it changes the volume so that's how i would do it basically um, if you don't want to use this here with the cc thing right you can also uh, copy this or let's say cut it out and let's say you click or you delete this here and you click on this volume knob you can also just add here this as pure volume knob modulation, right? All you need to do is basically select here the knob you want and it changes here then the automation lane. And then you go in here and say control and V and paste it in and then it modulates the volume knob directly, but it's probably not what you want to do. Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? I'm not sure, can you actually invert this here? Uh, let me see, scale. No, it doesn't go into the negative range. Okay, so that's not possible. Um, so yeah, so the big benefit, like I said uh, before, is that you can actually use a DevX grid with the follower and you can apply some processing to it, make it your own, react to the audio a bit differently than a normal vocal writer. You can apply some delays or some a time shift device maybe to create some kind of look ahead or maybe clip it, limit it in a way or multiply it, you know, add some processing to it, make it your own, then record it to a second track and then you can copy and paste it to your first track again onto um, your CC channel 
and then use here a MIDI CC modulator to rack to the right controller number and then it kind of works. Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? Yeah, that's because I applied here a lot of chaos probably. Um, yeah, so yeah, this this is basically how you do it. Um, there's no way to record this on just one track or one automation lane on the same track. You have to use a second one. Um, I couldn't find another way to do it, okay? I hope this answers the question. Um, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, um, leave me a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.